We often have a pre-constructed idea of what talent looks like. This is often common in sport. The bigger, faster, stronger a player is, the more believable it is that they will have the tools to become a dominant force. Onlookers easily spot a player and speak highly of their physical gifts. As a result, there's a healthy amount of apprehension in facing those with overwhelming physicality. For it's only when you come across someone who is bigger and stronger than you, that for the first time, you realize how small and weak you really are. But physical traits aren't the only thing that determine talent. Were that the only factor, those without overwhelming physical aspects would have no chance. People like you, or I, would have no chance. Yet these athletes that we see with our very eyes are bound to a simple truth. They aren't limited to only one way of being great. The year is 2012. There's something about this 17-year-old Serbian kid that intrigues the coaching staff. He can't even run two laps around the court without feeling exhausted. He can't even do a push-up. There are doubts about his work ethic, conditioning, and physical traits. But the coach senses that they have a special player on their hands. The year is 2014. He's sleeping during the NBA draft, having just completed a season in the Adriatic League. His brother calls him to wake him up, to deliver news of which team he's been drafted to, champagne ready to celebrate. He hangs up and goes back to sleep. He hears the news in the morning. To the melody of Taco Bell's Quesarito commercial, the Denver Nuggets have selected him with the 41st pick. They see him as more of a project than a complete player. He arrives in 2015, and gawks in his first training session. His contemporaries are so fast, so athletic, so much different than him. They dunk and they fly up the court. A seed of doubt plants itself in his mind. Maybe he should just go back home to Serbia, at least there, he can compete. But he has an inkling that maybe he has something that other players don't. So he stays. He develops slowly. His style of play and unorthodox movement foreign and awkward to the average NBA fan. There are still doubts about his abilities, conditioning, and rather odd demeanor. Even as he makes strides, other players view him as slow, fat, unathletic. And perhaps they're right to some degree. It takes years. Repeated failures and devastating losses confront him and the Nuggets. Yet he ascends from an overseas prospect, to a developmental project, to a bench contributor, to a plus starter, to a local star, to a national all-star, to prestigious superstar, and finally, to league MVP. Two consecutive MVP awards in 2021 and 2022 gives ammunition to both his supporters and fuel for his doubters. He's won these awards, but he hasn't won a championship. He hasn't experienced success in the playoffs, they say. You can't win with him at the core of your team. Now 28, he leads the Denver Nuggets against the Miami Heat, helping to capture the first championship in Nuggets history, breaking playoff records and winning finals MVP in the process. That player is Nikola Jokic. Jokic is a strange player to evaluate by any measure. Teams don't draft second rounders and expect them to really become... anything, and certainly not ones who look like Jokic. If they become an active contributor to the team, that's usually considered to be a win. Until Jokic, a second round draft pick in the common era had never won an MVP award before. He's won three of them as of 2024. Jokic is an athlete who truly embodies the idea that we aren't limited to only one way of being great. That despite not having the ideally desired physical traits, he honed other parts of his game to become one of the most dominant forces in the league today. He is widely considered to be one of the greatest draft steals in NBA history, and one of the best players in the NBA today. I think any observer, casual or hardcore, would say he has talent. But it wasn't always that way. 
If it was, he most assuredly would have gone higher than the 41st pick when there were only 60 picks in the NBA draft on a yearly basis. In my series on talent so far, we've discussed Ushijima, how he began with natural aptitude and developed his traits to become a complete player, with his personal reflections settling on how lucky he is, and not taking that for granted. We've discussed Hirogami as a counterexample of a player who began with natural aptitude and a strong foundation, one who would also be considered lucky, but couldn't withstand the immovable weight of his talent and burned out on volleyball before he could reach the ceiling of what he could have been. And now we reach part four, focusing on a central figure during the Nationals arc of Haikyuu, and the one who achieves the coveted title of the Little Giant. Enter. Hoshiyumi Korai, Japanese youth camp invitee, ace of Kamomedai, and one of the central rivals to Hinata. A character who stands out not only for his height, but his skill and attitude. A character who, in many ways, could have been the protagonist of his own series if we were following him and Kamomedai instead of Hinata, Kageyama, and Kurosuno. The kanji of his name does a fantastic job of representing who he is, his personality, and his team. Korai, meaning incoming light, and Hoshiyumi, meaning star ocean. In fact, the bonus page in 343 shows Korai's mother proudly giving her boys their first names to equally match their glittery last name. I love the meanings behind the kanji, particularly to explain the sort of player and person he is. A bona fide star, one who appears in the series as the first player that is physically comparable. Nay, better than Hinata at his size. And he bursts onto the scene for the viewer and the high school volleyball scene with the sort of attention and spotlight he would rightfully garner, particularly in the ocean of numerous players. Someone who isn't content with simply blending in with the crowd. Hoshiumi has many fantastic quotes and scenes throughout the Kamo Medai match which I hope beyond hope get the attention they deserve. But one particular scene has always stood out to me. He had every intention of beating a player just like him during the tournament, and climbing to the very top, standing alone. But Hinata showed him otherwise. That if one looks beyond the surface, what we can see in our preconceptions, in fact, we aren't limited to only one way of being great. Up through most of Haikyuu, the only players similar in height and body type to Hinata are the Liberos of various teams. That is, of course, until Hoshiumi makes his bombastic appearance at the Japanese youth training camp as a spiker. Though relatively unknown due to his hatred of interviews and the fact that they only focus on his height rather than his skills, one thing is very, very clear. He is an absolute stud. The build-up to Hoshiumi's full reveal delivers upon expectations, and provides a clear example for Hinata of how far he's come, and how much farther he has yet to go. It's prudent here to remind ourselves of my theoretical formula. Physical traits plus intangibles and luck determines the ceiling of one's talent, with some starting a little farther ahead and having a higher floor due to natural aptitude. In the beginning of the series, Tsukushima makes a blunt declaration. If only you were 30 centimeters taller, you could have become a superstar. And this is true. In real life, in sports, the common adage is that bigger is always better. The Japanese national coach echoes this when he muses during the Kurosno Kamomedai match. But, he has a caveat to Tsukushima's assertion. It's unfortunate. But we aren't looking for small yet skilled players like them. What we look for are the big and skilled players. But in Japan at least, when we train the big and skilled players for our team, it isn't like the littler, exceptionally talented players like them just bow and step aside. We don't look for them. But that doesn't matter. That is no deterrent to them. They come to us with solid, undeniable strength, and they make us choose them. Oshiyumi proves the coach's observation forcefully true, not only at the net, but in all facets of the game as he demonstrates time and time again that he is far more than just his height, whether that be receiving, setting, serving, or scoring points. 
I am a huge fan of the Kamometai match, not only for where it takes the narrative of Haikyuu, but because of the thematic impact, the many important life lessons, questions, and musings it departs to the reader. Would Hoshiyumi still be a star if he were taller? That seems likely. But it would remove something that is core to his story and to the sort of player that he is. In chapter 343, titled Little Giants, which is arguably one of my favorite chapters in all of Haikyuu, we as the readers finally get a look into the psyche and backstory of Hoshiyumi. As a little child, he was the only short member of his family. How he was reminded of this fact often by his older brother, who gloated over him constantly and seemed to easily do things that Korra would have to practice endlessly at. And how his mother, in a pivotal moment that would alter the rest of Korai's life, opened up the world to him. That after Korai complains his physical inadequacies are preventing him from winning, his mother gives him a foundational lesson. And while I can only speculate, I imagine Hoshiyumi only became the player he is due to her encouragement. Oh really? You can't beat any tall guys because you're short? There isn't a single way you could ever win against them, ever? Hey, Korai? Yeah, there probably isn't any way to make yourself taller. But did you know? There are lots of ways to make yourself better. Hoshiyumi was able to do one of the most difficult things that any individual, regardless of their talent, must do. He held onto his mother's words and made himself better. He overcame the mental block in front of him. And what's more, Hoshiyumi was not immediately a superstar, someone who was anointed like Ushijima to be the chosen one. No, he was a player who spent all of middle school on the bench, being a relative unknown until his emergence on the national stage. In many ways, I think that's what greatness is. Making the most of talent and making yourself better. Talent is, after all, something you make bloom. Hoshiyumi learned about his weaknesses. He accepted them. He gave up on the weapons he couldn't wield, instead fighting all the ones he could, and carefully, persistently honed them all to a wicked point. And in the words of the original Little Giant, that is what it means to be a Little Giant. Physical traits can only take you so far. Sports and various other mediums are filled with numerous examples who had abundant physical talents, and an incredible amount of luck, and flamed out for some reason or another, usually coming down to what we previously discussed in Part 3 with Hirugami and Andrew Luck. They both arguably had everything in the formula of talent, but when it came to the intangibles, specifically the weight of their own mentalities, it was enough to get them to let go of the sports that they'd spent all their lives pursuing. Hoshiyumi, and Hinata, though I'll talk much more in depth about him later, symbolizes one of my favorite monologues in all of Haikyuu. I like to think that, across both middle and high school, I was one of the higher level players back in Miyagi Prefecture. I was well aware that I was the ace, and I was confident I deserved to be. But this is Nationals. The further up you go here, the bigger, the faster, the smarter your opponents get. I thought I had to rely on skill and technique to make up for my lack of height to succeed. But you know, anybody can have good skill and technique, tall or short. All you have to do is practice. The world is utterly unfair, but at the same time, it's ruthlessly fair. I bet you that Hoshiyumi knows that. He probably has for a long time. In the time skip, Hoshiyumi has carried the mantle of the Little Giant into the professional leagues, proving to be as much of a force there as he was in high school, singled out as part of the monster generation. That despite his shortcomings and weaknesses, he has more than proven that his height is no handicap. In fact, it is that which gives him his wings. It is that which fueled him to become the Little Giant. By the end of the Jackals Adlers match, the mutual respect between the two shortest spikers is undeniable, so much so that Hoshiyumi is effusive in his praise of Hinata, 
and resolute in his desire to stand on the world stage alongside his counterpart. Time and time again, it's been proven that no matter the differences in the makeup of talent, whether that be physical traits, intangibles, or luck, as is often said in sports, game recognizes game. Greatness recognizes greatness. Whether conventional or unorthodox, no matter the era or how many times they face off against each other, greatness comes in all kinds of forms, from the seemingly unathletic and frumpy, to those who are perceived to be small, to those lacking the techniques, and of course, to those who not only fit the eye test, but are able to match the expectations placed on them. We may not look the part of talent, but I wholeheartedly believe in the words of Hoshiyumi. Not looking the part of people's perceptions doesn't imply incompetence. It's one thing to be told it. It's another to fully believe it. That we aren't limited to only one way of being great. But more often than not, it might just take a little longer than most for talent and greatness to be recognized, even when we're in the midst of it. Even if it's by others, or especially ourselves. <laughs>